This time, instead of awards, I turned to Godly for inspiration. That's when I stumbled upon a website I had seen before but ignored, mostly because the layout looked way too challenging. The site had this incredible 3D circular layout that just looked so smooth and well put together. Creating a basic circular layout is doable with some CSS and simple JavaScript, but making it look like the images are curved on a 3D surface, that's where things get complicated. Since I have been exploring 3.js lately, I thought it was time to give it a shot. It took me around 6 to 7 hours to put together a basic version of this layout, and while it's not perfect, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Since I'm still new to building 3D layouts like this, I decided to focus entirely on the layout itself and not on adding text animations. Maybe I'll cover that in some future video. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D image slider using HTML, CSS and 3.js. This stuff takes a lot of time and effort to build, so if you enjoy the video, I would really appreciate it if you drop a like. It helps the video reach more people. And if you want to access the source code or want to support the channel, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. We'll start by adding some placeholder content to structure the page. First, I'll add a nearby to make sure the page doesn't look empty. It will have a simple layout, a logo on one side and some placeholder text on the other. Next, I'll add a footer with some placeholder text. Nothing fancy, just enough to balance the layout. For the slider, we need a wrapper where our 3D slides were rendered. I'll add a div with the class slider wrapper and place a canvas element inside it. This canvas is where we'll be rendering the 3D slider using JavaScript later. Finally, I'll add a div with the class overlay. This will allow us to apply a gradient on top of the slider. And that's it for the HTML. Now let's move on to the CSS. We'll start with a simple reset to remove any default margins and paddings and make sure everything uses border box for sizing. Next, I'll set the HTML and body to take up the full width and height, giving the page a solid black background and white text. I've added a tall height of 1000 viewport height for now so we have enough scroll space to test things out. I'm also setting a base style for paragraphs, a smaller font size, lightweight and reduced opacity for that clean subtle look. The logo paragraph gets full opacity to stand out. Now let's style the navbar and footer. Both are fixed to the top and bottom of the screen respectively taking up the full width. I'm using flexbox to neatly align their content, a logo and some text on the sides. I've added some padding and z index to ensure they sit on top of everything else. The slider wrapper is where the 3D magic will happen. It's fixed to cover the entire viewport with overflow set to hidden so nothing spills out. The canvas is also going to be fixed with 100% width and height of the wrapper. Finally, I've added an overlay to create a nice gradient effect on top of the slider. This uses a radial gradient that fades from transparent to a subtle black shade at the edges helping us match the original design. And that's it for the CSS setup. Now we are ready to bring this to life with 3.js in the JavaScript. We'll start by adding a load event listener to the window. First, I'm initializing Lannis to get smooth scrolling on the page. You can find this block of code on their documentation website. I'm just adding it as is. To get started, we need to load all the images we'll use in the slider. I've created an empty array to store the images and added a counter to keep track of how many I've loaded. Next, I'll add a function to load the images one by one. Inside this function, I'm looping through all seven images. When an image finishes loading, I add it to the array and update the counter. If an image fails to load for any reason, I still update the counter so it doesn't break the process. Once all seven images have finished loading, whether successfully or not, I call the main function that sets up the slider. To load the images, I am pointing to their source files inside the assets folder. Each one is named sequentially, so they are easy to load one after another. Now that the images are loaded, it's time to set up the main scene using 3.js. First, I am creating a new scene which acts as the container for everything we'll render. Next, I am adding a perspective camera. 
I am setting the field of view to 45 degrees and calculating the aspect ratio based on the width and height of the window. To render the scene, I am using the WebGL renderer. I have attached it to the canvas we created earlier, enabled anti-aliasing for smooth edges, and set the renderer to prioritize high performance. I am also adjusting the size of the render to match the width and height of the window and ensuring the pixel ratio doesn't go beyond 2 for better performance. Next, I'll define the parameters for the geometry we are going to use. I am starting with a width of 20 and height of 75 for the plane. To give it that nice curved look, I am also adding a curvature value of 35. For smooth edges and better detail, I am dividing the plane into 200 segments along both the X and Y axis. Once the parameters are ready, I am creating a plane geometry. This is the base shape we'll work with but right now it's completely flat. To add curvature, I am modifying the geometry's positions. For every point on the plane, I calculate its vertical position, figure out how far it is from the center and then adjust its z-axis value to create a curve. The further a point is from the center, the more it gets pushed ahead, giving us that curved effect. Finally, I am updating the geometry's normals. This ensures the lighting and shading work correctly when we apply materials later. I am starting with a total of 7 slides, each with a height of 15 units. I have added a small gap of 0.5 units between each slide. By combining the slide height and the gap, I calculate the total height of the entire slide cycle. Next, I am creating a canvas to render the texture dynamically. And I am setting its width to 2048 pixels and its height to 8192 pixels. These large dimensions ensure the texture looks crisp even on high resolution screens. To draw on the canvas, I'm getting its 2D rendering context. Once the canvas is ready, I'm turning it into a 3JS texture. I've set it to repeat both horizontally and vertically, allowing the texture to loop seamlessly as we scroll. I'm also configuring the filtering options for better performance and quality and optimization. With the texture ready, I'm creating a material using mesh basic material. This material will display the canvas texture on our geometry. I've also set it to render on both sides of the plane for a consistent look. Finally, I'm combining the geometry and material into a mesh and positioning it in the center of the scene. To add a bit of perspective, I'm rotating the plane slightly along the X and Y axis. Once that's done, I'm adding the mesh to the scene and setup for the slides is complete. Now let's set up the camera position to frame the curved geometry perfectly. I've defined a distance of 17.5 units from the center and added a height offset of 5 units to slightly elevate the camera. To position the camera at an angle, I'm calculating the X and Y offsets using trigonometry based on 20 degree rotation. The camera is also pointed towards the center of the geometry by setting its target to coordinates slightly below the center, giving us a more dynamic perspective. Finally, I've rotated the camera slightly along the Z-axis to add a subtle tilt for extra depth. Next, I'm defining the titles for each of the 7 slides. Now let's move on to updating the texture dynamically as we scroll. I've created a function called update texture. This function takes an offset value which controls how the slides move based on the scroll position. First, I clear the canvas by filling it with a solid black background. Then I set the font size, style and alignment for the text that will draw on the slides. To make the slider loop smoothly, I add some extra slides at the top and bottom. These extra slides help maintain continuity during the scroll animation. For each slide, I calculate its vertical position by multiplying its index with the slide height and the gap. I then adjust the position using the scroll offset. Next, I map this position onto the texture height to ensure the slides wrap around correctly. If the position goes out of bounds, I use a simple formula to wrap it back within the texture's dimensions. For each slide, I also figure out its index and use that to fetch the correct image from our images array. Now to draw the image on the canvas, I calculate how it should fit within the slide's rectangle. If the image's aspect ratio is different from the rectangles, I adjust its size and position so it fits perfectly without distortion. Then I draw the image and overlay the slide title in white text centered on the rectangle. 
Finally, I mark the texture as needing an update so 3GS knows to refresh it in the scene. This function will be called every time the scroll position changes, keeping the slides in sync with the scroll. Now let's adjust the scrolling behavior to update the slider dynamically. I am starting by creating a variable to track the current scroll position. With Lenis managing the smooth scrolling, I am listening to its scroll event. Every time the page is scrolled, Lenis provides useful details like the current scroll position and the overlay scroll limit. I calculate the scroll progress by dividing the current position by the total limit and then I pass the value to the update texture function. This keeps the slider in sync with the scrolling motion. After updating the texture, I re-render the scene to reflect the changes. Next, I am adding a resize event handler to make sure the slider works correctly when the browser window is resized. I have wrapped this logic in a timeout to avoid running it too frequently during the rapid resizing. Whenever the window is resized, I update the camera's aspect ratio, refresh its projection matrix and adjust the render size to match the new dimensions. Finally, to kick things off, I call the update texture with an initial offset of 0 and render the scene for the first time. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.